They're saying it came from aliens. Where did the aliens come from? Where did the aliens get the quality of life? Oh, they got it from other aliens. And where did they get it from? Wait, wait a minute. If Islam subjugates women, why is the greatest number of converts to, uh, to Islam in the first world countries, America, Europe, and so on, well, why, why are they predominantly women? Greetings and peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. Dr. Brown, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Alaikum salam. What I think to life. Hope to to. Good, thanks. Why, why do they call it new atheism? Is it something new that never existed? Let's get right into the topic. You've been doing some wonderful work refuting it, but I want to start off with why do they call it the new atheism? You know, really, uh, to be honest with you, I, I just like to call it what it is. It's atheism. New, old, whatever. It's I mean, what what is particularly new about atheism? I think... You know, I'm not sure why they call it uh, the new atheism, but uh, what I do know is that the face of atheism has changed in that, whereas it existed in the past as something quite, kind of quiet, people were atheists and they just sort of kept to themselves. Now it has become almost, uh, well not almost, or frankly evangelical in, in that they are calling people to atheism, they are advertising it, they're making aggressive campaigns to gather people toward atheism. And that is a shift, and that is something something new and different. Yeah, it seems like they have their atheist prophets now proselytizing, trying to win the hearts to this belief that something came from nothing, that, how does it go in a nutshell? Hmm. That well, we're an accident, because by saying you're, you're basically an atheist, you're just an accident that happened purposeless instead of purposeful. Can we say that? You're an well, accident. You know, look, I mean, if, 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 you look, if you're asking me basically what is the focus of atheist beliefs, it's exactly what, you know, atheism means, no God. They, they just simply believe in that there is no God. So if we were atheists, we'd be two accidents. Well, you know, this is not exactly how they see it, but I mean, they see it as, uh, you know, they see us as the process of development from the beginning of the universe with the Big Bang and then the process of evolution through natural selection. Uh, you know, it's basically a, their way of explaining where we came from. Yeah. And th this is something that I touched on on my talks called The Big Questions. The Big Questions, these are on my... Uh, I've read those, yeah. Um, yeah, it's in an article and it's in my on my website as a series of What's lectures. your website called? People can go to see that? Read well... It used Level to be, Truth. It used to be called leveltruth.com, and uh, well, it's still called leveltruth.com, but it is being changed to, to just my name, drlawrencebrown.com, or drlbb.com, so that's drlbb.com. Dr. Lawrence Brown, if you didn't know, he is a former U.S. Navy major. Was Air Force. Air Force major, was an atheist, tried very hard to be a Christian. Uh, in the link below, we'll have his previous show, you also have a website that you're, we're talking about level truth that you're changing it to Dr. Lawrence Brown. And another thing I wanted to mention has a PhD or is a doctor in divinity. Yeah. Okay. But you know, I think it's, I think it's time to be clear about this. I don't value religious degrees at yeah. all. I don't value. Religious I'm just saying degrees. you got they, one. Yeah. Okay. I got one. And you're an expert in comparative religion. Yeah, well, well, hey, listen, that's what, hey, I can introduce you how I want. Now, listen, let's get back. Let's not, <laughs> look, uh, uh, I'm going to bow out of this and okay. saying, no, wait, I do, I do want to make a point about this. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, you can say that I have these degrees. Personally, I consider religious degrees to be basically worthless. Anybody can get one. Well, that's not quite true. You do have to work for, you, you do. Anyone have to can work. get a, a doctor degree and uh, uh, eye surgeon, be surgery and, uh, no, of course not. But you know, these are different things. I yeah. mean, I, I mean, I a, a degree in, in in eye surgery is much more regulated. Uh, there are much more strict <laughs> requirements. No, listen, just you know, just so you know, I mean, pretty much anybody can go onto the internet 
and get a uh, doctorate of divinity or uh, become an ordained priest. I mean, it, it's it's not particularly I hard to you. do. Um, and and the point I'm just making is I don't care if you have a master's and a PhD. I don't care if you have 10 PhDs. I don't care if it's from, you know, the Istanbul School of Theology and Radiator Repair or if it's from Harvard <laughs> or Oxford. OK, it doesn't it doesn't matter because this is not how people choose religion. People don't choose religion by the smartest guy out there with the with the best degree. If that were the case, everybody would be following the pope or uh, whoever, is, you know, or uh, you know, whoever is considered to be the most eminent theologian in the world. But that's not how people choose religion. Mm -hmm. choose reli people choose religion by what makes sense to them and what conforms to their template, their inner template of beliefs. Yeah. If you, um, <clears throat> here, this is something I can't wrap my mind around. Maybe you can help us, me and others um, with this. Even if you are an atheist and you argue evolution at a uh, micro level not a macro level whatever the case how do you get to the point that there was an initiator who initiated every, with the universe and everything so what okay let's say hypothetically evolution and man was a some ape chimpanzee and now what, whatever and you have faith in this how does that still exclude god the creator the almighty okay good you, question really great question because here's the crux of the matter um, atheists explain the universe having come into existence through the Big Bang, and they explain the diversity of species through the, you know, the process of evolution as a result of natural selection. Okay, n now what I think you're asking is uh, basically referring to the point that I made previously, which is how does that, how does that contribute to the atheist debate? Why can't we understand that the Big Bang, and if there were evolution by the process of natural selection, I'm not saying there is, I'm not saying there you know, was or that there wasn't, I'm just saying that if that is how the, you know, the diversity of species developed, why does that change the debate? Why does that mean that there's no God? Can't, can't we consider the possibility that God used these devices as the process by which he brought the universe into existence, by, as the process by which he brought the diversity of species into existence. It, it, it's very, very, very capricious to say that because we think that we have, you know, figured out how the Big Bang happened, and by the way, you know, we've plotted some things back, but the moment of origin is a mystery. Uh, but uh, and, you know, we think we understand how evolution could have worked through the process of natural selection. Okay, so what? So what? I mean, can't, aren't our minds large enough to conceive of the possibility that our creator created the Big Bang and then exerted control over it to, to keep it, uh, you know, basically from degenerating into chaos? Can't we consider that the process of natural selection is not a random process, but is rather the device that our creator used to bring out the diversity of natural species? So this, you know, this argument doesn't, doesn't work in negating God, but what it does work in negating is certain religions when those views do not conform with religion. For example, as Muslims, as Muslims, our scripture tells us that the universe is expanding and continuing to expand and is telling us that it was Allah that expanded our universe and that it's continuing to expand. So we have no problem with the Big Bang. You know, for the religion of Islam, these scientific concepts can exist within our religion. You can be a Muslim and believe in the Big Bang and you have no problem. Mm -hmm. You're just believing in the Big Bang as the as the mechanism that our creator put in, put into a uh, place to bring the universe into existence. And it's the same thing with the theory of evolution and natural selection. Again, whether you believe in it, don't believe in it, doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter because uh, you can, you know, as a Christian, you might have problems with it. As a Muslim, we have no problem with it. We just say a few modifications. You know, we, we believe that the human being was a separate creation separate from the animals, did not evolve from the apes. Um, and certainly, if you believe in a god, is that not within the realm of his capabilities? Uh, if you don't believe in a god, no, okay, well, that's different. 
But if you do believe in a God who cr could create this universe and everything upon it, is it not within the realm of his capabilities to create the human organism? Mm -hmm. Do you think what's pushed many people towards this new atheism is the idea that many people have of God, this fictitious character that's been created in the minds of people like, for instance, who we love dearly, Jesus, peace be upon him. People have made a, a human being into God. People have made creation into God. But when you accept Islam, it, we actually start off with the proclamation, there is no God, anything in creation, except the one who created creation, who's outside of creation. Do you think, do you get my point, that they go toward this, towards this because of all these human gods that people have concocted these fictitious gods like making jesus peace be upon him a mighty messenger who that people take as a god and other saints and all these other weird superstitions and weird things that are ascribed to to god okay you get uh, you get my point well i do and i mean actually I was and then the people are just like this can't be god this monkey you're worshiping this cow a human being that has a color a nationality you know walks on the earth goes to the bathroom and then people just get turned off by this yeah no, I get your point. And actually, my daughter and I were just talking about this today. We had a very nice conversation about this because, you know, there, you know, the, there are another a number of kind of relevant quotes. I mean, one is that if God were small enough to be understood, he would not be big enough to be worshipped. OK, I mean, it, it's kind of like that old analogy about people examining an elephant blindfolded. And this was my daughter's, you know, my daughter's uh, mention. She was, she was saying it's kind of like that. And I said, yes, it is. Because, you know, one person, one blindfolded person feels the leg. Another blind person, blindfolded person feels the ear. Another one feels the tail. Another one feels the trunk. And so they all come away with a different concept of what an elephant is. Mm. All right. Now, if, if you never saw an elephant, you would only have that experience and you would feel completely certain that you knew what an elephant is all right but in fact you've only had a very very small exposure and so you're ignorant you you really have no concept of what the elephant is like as a whole well so it is with our creator our religion tells us lesa kamithli hum shay there is nothing like unto him there is, if there is nothing like unto him, there is nothing in this worldly creation that we can use as a reference by which to understand him. Allah may have a face, but, but it's not like yours and mine because Laysa kamithli hum shay. There is nothing like unto him. Uh, Allah may have a hand. Is it like this hand? Of course not. Because there is nothing like unto him, not, nothing like his hand. So so we, we, we know that he has certain properties the property of you know mercy and love and and so on but and and we know he has certain you know qualities but we cannot quantitate or qualitate or even envision what those things are mm -hmm. okay now there's there's just another thought which is basically if our creator were uh you know with within our vision i mean if we were able to uh, see our creator if our creator were small enough that we could see him he would be an idol mm -hmm. and you know this is just another point you know the atheists demand proof proof you know i got to see god with my own eyes i mean show him show him to me uh you know or show me proof of him or, uh, which is a subject we can come back to but you know they they expect to want to be able to see him with their own eyes well whose rules are it are it uh, uh, you know who whose rules govern this universe uh, i mean if our creator wishes for his you know his existence to be shrouded in mystery that's his decision not ours yeah we're going to take a break so you could be honored with the title. This is son, the son of Adam, first man. People w would take strong offense if you said, this is the, the son of a monkey. Think about that. We'll be right back with more of my special guest, good friend, Dr. Lawrence Brown. Don't go anywhere. Salam says love all mankind. That's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. Please subscribe to The D Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The D Show by making a donation in the link below. Welcome back to The D Show. Special guest all the way from 
Medina. Dr. Lawrence Brown, what is the, the crucial core belief that most atheisms hold on to and if this belief is taken, refuted, that it would just crumble? Well, atheism believes, atheism believes or most atheists, but uh, the one core belief, okay, well, um, I mean, obviously, they believe that there is no God. And the argument that's used to substantiate, and if this is refuted, everything crumbles. Right. Well, I mean, there certainly are a number of those. I mean, if you could disprove uh, evolution by the process of natural selection, if you could disprove the Big Bang and so on, uh, the, their scientific frame of reference would disappear. Um, and that's kind of a long discussion. I think actually we should come back to that. But um, I think the, you know, the bigger issue is just that most atheists that I've known, their hearts and their minds are pretty much sealed they're they're not they're not willing to consider other possibilities you know they're not even willing to consider the possibility of a god and i i think one point i would make is that they have this uh, you know they have this saying it's called you know hitchens razor and it's basically a theory that whatever can be proposed without proof can can be uh, negated without proof you know what if you if you say that there's a god and you don't have proof then you can equally well say that there's no god without proof okay mm -hmm. and uh it it's just kind of dancing around the subject because you can just turn that around well if you say there's no god without proof then i can say that there is a god without proof mm -hmm. you know uh, this is this is a matter of belief it's a belief system okay you either feel the presence of god or don't or to to speak in even more non-specific terms creator let's just talk about creator you know, some people are upset even by the word of god you know the word god okay uh, and they rightly recognize that the word god does not have any origin in scripture it is a name or a word of uncertain origin it is nowhere in the bible okay uh, i mean if you look at the bible and uh it, you know it's untranslated language you will not find god in the bible Okay, and that's, that's what we find in our translations, yes. but not in the original. Okay, so in any case, I mean, the point is just that they don't believe in God. That's, that's their template, okay? And, uh, and that's certainly where, where I was when I was an atheist. Um, I experienced the awakening of um, a feeling of the presence of my creator. What I did not experience what was I did not experience a change in my scientific convictions. Okay, I I believed in the Big Bang. I believed in uh, in the the uh, process of natural selection. And until this day, I argue that you can believe in those things and still be a person of spirituality, spirituality, and a person of religion. Now, I tried very hard. I fought, tried very hard to accept the Jewish and the Christian. Uh, religions. I, I tried very hard to uh, understand them enough f to make sense of them, and that never worked for me. Okay, and and part of the message that I'm trying to put out is that you know atheists have, from what I've seen, they have a very very strong hatred of Christianity, or what it stands for, or its theology, and they pick very well upon you know, inconsistencies within the religion or hypocrisies, um, things, things that uh, they can point to and basically question how, I mean, where does this tenet of faith come from? Mm -hmm. and, and show precisely that, you know, most, most Christian beliefs actually do not come from the teachings of Jesus. They come from the teachings of Paul. And who was the prophet anyway? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and, and they can show that many of the beliefs do not have a biblical basis. You know, for example, the Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You will find some things that you might suggest it, but look a little bit deeper, and you'll find that, you know, that these things, many Bibles have taken them out because they have been recognized as uh, inaccurate insertions. They do not exist in the foundational uh, scripture. They exist in the translation, but only because 
it was a marginal note of a scribe that was taken from the margin into the scripture. It was a note of a scribe. It was not scripture. Okay, so, uh, you know, without becoming preachy or going into yeah. a whole mm-hmm. big analysis, you can, you, can look, you, you can look this up in my books on my website. Again, it's leveltruth.com. Leveltruth.com. And that's changing to drlbb.com, drlbb.com. But, um, you know, read Misguided, mm-hmm. uh, and you will find all the information you want on this subject and more. Uh, there's a chapter just on the Trinity and, and many other points of, of Christian theology. That's not the point. The point is this. A lot, of, a lot of atheists, part of their atheism is just an absolute disdain of Christianity. And the message I'm trying to get across is, uh, well, yeah, there are other people out there who are very religious. And I'm talking about Muslims now. They're very religious. Um, and they're not Christian. They're Muslim, and Islam has always been a religion uh, of science as well as spirituality. I mean, we have to remember that much of the roots of biology, physiology, medicine, chemistry, physics, mathematics, and so on, uh, grew up from the Islamic religion. The Islamic religion encourages uh, intelligence and investigation and for us to know our physical world and, and so on. So the early, the early Muslims experienced this explosion in knowledge that led to the first universities like the University at Cordoba and so on. Which, you know, and the centers of Islamic knowledge became known as the centers not only of uh, you know, Islamic religion but also science and learning. And it was, it was, from, it was from these origins that so much of science has grown. Yeah, so, so we, we, because that's what usually people think, either A, like when you believe in God, okay, they equate it with the two fairy or Santa Claus, or that you're anti-science, but all along, Islam actually, when people were in the dark ages, Islam was actually leading the way in science. And it's interesting because nowadays, we see science is figuring out the how of things. Like, you just were kind enough out of your love, you brought me a gift, an Edgewa date. So if I was to take that Edgewa date to a scientist, the scientist can give me the calorie account, he can give me all of the intricate details, the protein, the nutrition, this vitamin, this vitamin, but he can, and and, and that's a beautiful thing. But just because we figure out the how, why do people stop there? But that scientists can never tell me who brought me that date or the intention behind it and why so it's limited in the sense but that doesn't mean we reject the how but it seems like people now we know how lightning strikes how the clouds come just because we know the how people say we figured it out we don't need god i can't understand that well okay but that's because you're religious that's because you're spiritual and you know just to be clear you know i don't think that they I don't think the atheists demote the concept of a creator to the truth fairy or, or Santa Claus, except in the sense that they basically say that it is, you know, belief in these entities is the same. It's without foundation. But uh, there's a big difference, and that is that the tooth fairy doesn't tell us that the tooth fairy exists. Santa Claus does not tell us that the mm-hmm. Santa Claus exists, but God does tell us that he exists. And... If you are a person of science, science is a process of investigation. Now, you might not be able to accept the tenets of Christian faith. I'm with you there. I don't accept them either. You might not be able to accept the tenets of, uh, of Jewish faith. I'm with you. I don't accept them either. But you should be able to look back at these religions and uh, research them enough to find that there is commonality of certain, of certain elements. And so, for example, they all teach uh, monotheism at its core. Like I said, read my book. It's free download from the website. You don't have to pay a cent. But you'll find that uh, the New Testament does not teach the Trinity, the idea of the divine sonship of Jesus Christ. Um, uh, the you know the idea of the laws having of uh, the laws of the religion having changed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These were all inventions that were ushered in by other than Jesus Christ, okay? If you, read, if you read the Bible, okay, looking just at the teachings of Jesus Christ, 
three times, three times in the Bible, he's asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he says, no, o Israel, the Lord your God is one God. That is the greatest commandment, okay? The, the Lord your God is, is one. Now, um, that's monotheism. So you have a common, you have a common thread through, through these religions from Abraham to, uh, you know, on up, Ismail, Isaac. How long would you say Noah, that would be, around 10,000 years? Jesus, Moses, okay, just wait, let me finish this. The, the point being there's commonality in the thread. There's commonality of revelation. Okay, every time the revelation got corrupted, it was incumbent upon our creator to renew it. So you have, com you have uh, continuity in the chain of revelation, continuity in the chain of prophets, and one thing that stands out is through all of these works, the, the Akhida or the creed remains the same, the creed of monotheism, the creed of a prophet being a man, not a god. Okay, another, you know, a, a, another uh, mistake that is commonly made in Christianity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all, all I'm saying is that if you do your research, you find that there are commonalities um, which basically point to an explanation for why there is a continuity in the chain of revelation and continuity in the chain of prophets, which lead up to a final prophet and a clarifying revelation yeah. that's remained unchanged unto this day. And, 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 and you don't have to separate religion and science. You do have to in the religions with which it is not compatible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so Christianity, like I said, you, you know, you, you can't make sense of the Big Bang and evolution in the context of Christianity uh, or Judaism, but you can in Islam because Islam is a religion of science. Yeah. How long would you say, how many, over the span of how many years, thousands of years, did this chain of continuity, the same message as being deliver, delivered from all these, how long approximately? Is that I, I, somewhere around 10,000 years from, from when all of the prophets we're passing along this message from one, and it would have to be from all these years from them I, to I, I couldn't even say for, because because you know the original revelation was oral. Yeah, and and our Creator tells us that so, no population was left without you know with my, without a a, a messenger, the, somebody bringing the yeah, message. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make for all of these prophets that are still known today, messengers, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, Solomon, David, Ishmael, I, all of them, when you look back, like you're saying, bringing the same message, not a trinity, not Christianity, but submission to the will of the creator, their followers and their followers, it seemed like it's that's far-fetched that they had conspired together to, to this day to bring that message that makes that sense it fits makes sense of it all the purpose of life why we're here the day of judgment and all of these things if you ponder over it's things that are good for humanity good for society good for yourself and you're not just an accident that happened yeah okay granted but we have to deal with what we have again you know atheists are you know are, are people who like to deal in logic they like to deal in the things that we have you know we have in our hands to hold and that is the revelations we have we can't really go back beyond that to Sort sort of make supposition about what the prophets who are bearing the oral messages were teaching. Uh, all we can say is that our Creator tells us that no population was left without a messenger. And again, this does make sense in the continuity of the chain of revelation. That at a time when there was no communication between tribes and so on, wherever they were in the world, our Creator provided them with revelation so that they had a chance to either submit or not. And thereupon they are judged, okay? But when mankind developed the facility for recording the message in writing and then developed communication between the tribes and so on and so forth, then this process became uh, a lot easier because once a revelation was recorded, that revelation could be copied and passed on to others. Yeah. But every time it became corrupted, okay, every time it became corrupted, it was... Uh, you know, it was, uh, it became incumbent upon the creator to renew the revelation so that he would not leave us without guidance. Yeah. Tim, you, you mentioned logical. I, I don't, I don't agree there. I think it's very illogical that something would come from nothing. I, it's logical that a man wouldn't be God that, okay, you know, wait, many, wait, 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 let's come back to that. Yeah. Right, because when you do talk to an atheist, when you really start getting deep, got it, got it. But I'm just, I'm just, they saying, start becoming illogical. 
I'm just saying, like, we've got what, like, two minutes left in this session. Five minutes. We'll give you five. Uh, <laughs> five minutes. Okay, this is just not going to work. I mean, I mean, look. And I then mean, they start talking about UFOs and flying saucers and all these. Stra- on the surface, it seems logical, but when you really start dialoguing and talking, it becomes really illogical. Okay, look, if we've got five minutes, let me talk just, to me. Tell let me. Let me just talk to you about one of those things. But what I've got to say yeah. is, if you want to talk about, you know, what atheists see as the as the origin and yeah. how we came into existence, you you got to give me more time. We got to do another episode. So what you just said about the aliens. Okay. Here, here's one point there. Um, you know, the atheists are basically academic. They're intellectuals. They like to think that they have it all figured out. Um, but there's one thing that they cannot explain about the process of evolution and Mm. via natural selection. And that is where the quality of life came from. Scientists can Frankenstein together a body of an animal or a human being using perfectly functioning organs, but they can't make it live. They cannot even make, you know, a single celled organism live. They cannot construct it. They cannot give it the property of life. Wait, wait a minute. If Islam subjugates women, why is the greatest number of converts to, uh, to Islam in first world countries, America, Europe, and so on, well, why, why are they predominantly women that are literally shocked to death or that think about the animal that wills itself to death, all right? I mean, there's some animals that mourn themselves to death. I had a cockatoo that when I, when I gave it to somebody else for, for, uh, for caretaking during my absence, the cockatoo died in two days. It, you don't die from lack of food or lack of water in two days. This cockatoo was so sad so saddened by my absence and the absence of my family that it literally willed itself to death. Now, think about people who die from electrical shock. Think about people who die from uh, heart attack, okay? Some of them come back with CPR, but what about the ones who don't come back with CPR? We cannot bring those bodies back to life. So what is that indefinable quality of life? How does natural selection explain that? Now, here's the point. There's an old joke about you know the scientist who is giving the talk about creation and there's an old lady old old lady who stands up in the audience afterwards you know and she says oh you know really you're so ignorant you're so ignorant don't you know that this entire world is balanced on the back of a giant turtle and the scientist says oh ha ha you know well um tell me you know and tell me what is the turtle standing on and the old lady just looks at him and says, you are so stupid. You're so stupid. It's turtles all the way down. Now everybody laughs. What an ignorant old lady. It's turtles all the way down. How silly. Okay, fast forward to modern day. Okay, you have a scientist standing up on stage and he's talking about the Big Bang as the origin of the universe and evolution through natural selection as the explanation for the diversity of life as we know it today, ask him where the life came from. You know what their answer is now? The most common answer that they're giving now? It came from outer space. Once again, just like what we're talking about, that doesn't answer anything. They're saying it came from aliens. Where did the aliens come from? Where did the aliens get the quality of life? Oh, they got it from other aliens. And where did they get it from? What is the origin of the aliens? What's the origin of the quality of life? Other aliens, other aliens, other aliens. Now you've got these so-called intelligent scientists looking like this ignorant old lady in the audience. Instead Mm -hmm. of saying that it's turtles all the way down, they're saying it's aliens all the way up. Yeah. Now, I mean, just think about that for a minute. Mm-hmm. These, these are what I would call the, you know, the ignorant, intelligent people. Yeah. They're intelligent in a book-learned way, but they haven't thought their argument out. And I think, uh, just to set the record straight, I mean, there's mainstream, and I think many of these kind of scientists have hijacked what we perceive now as today as like the, the, the view that if you're a scientist, you can't believe in God. But I, I, I don't buy that because they're given the mic, but there are many scientists i mean really proficient in their field that they they they're they're believers in 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 a creator that's their, and we usually when we link scientists we think okay he's an atheist but no there are many scientists they don't obviously get that usually in the universities 
you know, because it's something in the textbooks, but there are many, many scientists who believe in a creator and it's their work has led them to be believe, but they don't, they're, they're not the ones that are given the, the, um, the platform nowadays. No, there's been a big resurgence in this. I mean, uh, when I was in college, and we're going back to ancient history now, we're talking about like, you know, 30-some 30, 30 years ago. When I was in college, basically all academicians, all scientists were atheists. Um, and in the short span of uh, about 40 years, in the short span about of, yeah, that's what it is, 40 years, uh, you find now an increasing number of scientists believing in a creator and no no longer able to discount a creator but able to believe in a creator and to believe in what science suggests such as the big bang mm -hmm. okay such as a diversity of species uh, able to believe in this in the context of believing in a creator the problem is the problem is that for most of them they have they have trouble reconciling their belief with the creator with any established religion they look at judaism and they say no that doesn't work for us they look at christianity and they say no that doesn't work either and they look at islam and and they say uh well no everybody knows that you know it's just a bunch of terrorists so where am i left i'm left as being a scientist with a belief in god or is some of them embrace christianity just out of you know that's the thing to do in in a predominantly christian country and they kind of sort of force themselves into in, into the belief the belief they're not comfortable with it it's like putting a square peg into a round hole but they can't find any other you know they can't find they can't find that square hole to put their square peg in they can't find a religion to conform, conform with their beliefs okay and the really interesting thing i found about that and the really, I mean, look at the YouTube videos, look at any of the lectures by, by these prominent atheists. Whenever they criticize Christianity, they criticize it on the basis of the tenets of faith. And they always show how they cannot accept these tenets of faith. Uh, and for good reason, for good reason. The evidence is there. And again, read my book, you'll understand why. Another thing is they never criticize Judaism, and as a matter of fact, many of them are strong supporters of Israel. Figure that out. I mean, that, that that's very inconsistent with their beliefs, but that just is the way it is. I mean, most of them uh, do not, they shy away from criticizing Judaism, I think largely because uh, they know that to do so will get them into trouble, and they know which side their bread is buttered on. When they criti criticize Christianity, they criticize completely on the basis of the tenets of faith, which they cannot you know, they cannot accept. But when it comes to Islam, they don't touch the tenets of faith because the tenets of faith in Islam are not the issue for them. They always talk about deeply emotional uh, issues like, you know, they, you know, Islam uh, is just a bunch of terrorists or they subjugate, you know, women. Wait, wait a minute. If Islam subjugates women, why is the greatest number of converts to, uh, to Islam in the first world countries, America, Europe, and so on. Well, why why are they predominantly women? Women. These, these are not. These are intelligent, intelligent women becoming Muslim. They're not. They're not stupid, ignorant uh, uh, women. These are intelligent women with well formed, uh, you know, opinions and, and so on, who are becoming Muslim as intelligent women. Why? If they if Islam sub subjugates women, why would they do that? Ask them, and you'll find the answer. And it's fine because Islam does not subjugate women. Yeah. It, you know, Islam, I mean, many of them will tell you that Islam sets them free. But, but the point is that while they are criticizing Christianity on the basis of tenets of faith, their criticism of Islam is always on the basis of the hot ticket issues that sort of evoke emotions. Okay, stop doing that. You're supposed to be an intelligent guy. You're supposed to be a man of academia. Talk to me about Islam from the tenets of faith. What objection do you have to believing in God is one God? What objection do you have believing in the continuity in the chain of revelation? You know, the prophets that, that, uh, that brought those books of revelation and a day of judgment, heaven, hell, um, angels. What is your objection upset except simply that you don't, you don't have the capability of seeing these things? You can't you know, you can't uh, have them to, to measure or, or quantitate. Um, you can't scientifically prove them. But tell me what 
you know, what objection do you have to those tenets of faith? Now, if you're not able to answer that, now, don't talk about these other things because you're not the rule maker. You're not the law maker. Mm -hmm. That's for our creator, not you. Where can they get in touch with you if they want to continue to dialogue, read some of your work, we're out of time, direct us? Right. Uh, my, my main website, which is leveltruth.com, and the name is changing to drlbb.com, doctor being drlbb.com. And um, you'll find uh, just a lot of information there. And my books are free downloads. Thank you very much, Dr. My Brown. Pleasure. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for tuning in to The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't right now. Like us, follow us on the Facebook, Twitter, and tune in every week for a new exciting episode. We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.